Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and this video is going to be a banner review of the newest weapons and gear for Kate Sith and Vincent. Pretty excited about talking about it. The other thing I really want to mention is that uh, yesterday, October 3rd, marked the one year anniversary for this channel, uh, the Nightlight9 YouTube channel. I'm very excited about that. I'll be honest, originally I wanted to kind of do a video doing a little bit more about that. I've just been so busy with work and stuff. I, I just didn't have the time, but I thought at least I should mention, I really appreciate everybody who supported me uh, along the way for the last year, especially people who were there, you know, during the first couple of months when nobody knew who I was. And uh, I was just, you know, somebody who thought they could be a little bit helpful making Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content. So thank you. All right, coming into the draw, We've got Kate Sith, we've got Vincent. I'm gonna start with Vincent. Um, I have generally better things to say about him, so that's where I'm gonna start. Uh, as far as the uh, costume goes, I think it looks super, super suave. Uh, I don't really care for the, the beak mask. Uh, this is kind of similar to Sephiroth's original Halloween costume. I didn't really like the mask and stuff they had on him, or at least I think it makes it age not as well because yeah, for Halloween it's cool, but then later on, the rest of this outfit is just really cool. Um, I love it. This is just probably the worst part to me personally. Everybody's got their own opinion though, and I'm sure you'll let me know about it in the comments. Uh, coming down here for the Crow Master suit, we've got this new R ability called Eerie Mask. Both of these uh, costumes have the same ability here, and that's magic defense plus 15%, HP plus 5%. Really like this R ability, it's very good, and so, from that standpoint alone, I think that the, both of these costumes are great. I think Vincent's is a little bit better depending on what you have for your account. I'll cover that more when I get to Kate's, but other than otherwise, we have Leaven Blade Arcanum, another Lightning Arcanum, and this is going to be for a Magic version, right? Now, obviously the Arcanum works either way, but Vincent's weapon is magical based. Tifa also has one, Cloud has one. Man, I, I can't even remember. I'll put up a chart a little bit later and we'll go through them. Uh, but the only people with real strong single target lightning magic weapons that will have Arcanums now are going to be Vincent and Tifa. So coming into the weapon, it's called Crow Familiar. Um, it's basically just lightning magic elemental damage. And then it's also got a multiplier um, down here. Nothing really uh, super, you know, noteworthy about this it's got a sigil boost the r abilities are very very comparable to tifa's and i will go through that as well the first thing i want to do though is show the weapon on tom rom's ob1 card so you can see what you get going from five star to ob1 all right so as usual the biggest thing that we're looking at here is obviously you get some extra stats you get some extra r abilities in in both the boost magic attack and lightning potency but the number one thing that we're concerned about from five star to OB1 is the C ability damage, and it goes up by 100%. However, there's also this 1.2 times multiplier, and at 620%, that becomes 744. So you're actually getting more than just 100% out of it. And at OB1, 744% is only 6% shy of what our magic uh, elemental damage weapons did in the beginning of the game at OB10. So very, very big deal. If you're gonna pick up this weapon, it's always worth trying to get it to OB1 as soon as possible. This should be wishlistable in the future though, so I don't think you have to be in a rush to do it now. However, if you're pulling and you wanna use it right away, OB1 is is got a lot of value here for you. Coming back now to look at the weapon uh, on the regular page, you can see it's at 780%, again, with the multiplier at OB6, and then at OB10, 940%. With the 1.2x multiplier, you're looking at 1128% magic lightning damage, which is huge. I believe that would be probably the highest um, C ability for flat damage in the game uh, for magic lightning. And now I wanna kind of just look at it really briefly against Tifa's weapon, the Kirin gloves that came from the Monster Hunter collab. So these are the Kirin gloves. And one thing to note about them is that they're limited. So if you weren't around for Monster Hunter collab, you 
didn't have a chance to get these, and you can't wishlist them in the future, which is one big nod to Vincent's weapon. Um, I can tell you, I went really hard on that banner. It was why I was able to get him to uh, OB7. But you can see here at max, you got 940% magical lightning damage, which is identical to Vincent's. However, instead of the 1.2x multiplier, hers gives, if 50% or more HP, magic attack increase, potency mid, only goes up to mid. Uh, that is also pretty good. And when these came out, I remember feeling like, these were amazing, and I still do. I, I still use them all the time uh, if I'm trying to do magic lightning damage with Tifa. Uh, they also have a sigil boost, although different than Vincent's. They have identical R abilities here, and so pretty much these weapons compare to each other by saying this one's got a buff to magic attack, which can be good or it can be kind of unnecessary depending on who else you're running in the party. And this one's limited, so if you don't have Kieran Gloves really leveled up, um, or you don't have them at all, I think Vincent's are, uh, this Crow Familiar weapon is really good. It is something that I would want to be going for. And honestly, if I had more crystals, I would consider going for it maybe anyway. I, I do think that it's great. I think that the Arcanum outfit with him is also good. And if I was a new player or somebody who didn't have a magical lightning damage single target DPSer, I would be trying to pick this up. I would be trying to pull a page in the banner and get this. Uh, that's that's kind of how I look at it. However, because I do have the Kieran gloves and I have Tifas, and because my crystals are only at 8,000 after the uh, anniversary pulls, I'm not gonna be going for it, I don't think. That may change. I really wanna see what the next banner for Halloween is. I think it's probably like Cloud, Sephiroth, somewhere in there. So I'm gonna, I wanna see that first and see what's available, but I do think that it is very worth it to a lot of players to try to get one page to get the costume. While I'm on this page, I also want to point out that I think what they've done with this banner is great in, in a couple ways. One, I love that they give vouchers here instead of just picking the costume, because it gives you incentive to maybe pull uh, without having to know exactly what you want to set here. I, I think that's kind of cool. The fact that on page two, same thing, but then there's more guarantees than we normally see. And even into page three and four, we've got more five-star guarantees along the way. We've got the vouchers still hitting here. I'm not 100% how that's gonna work because it does say volume one. Uh, and I don't know when the next banner comes out if that's gonna be considered still volume one or volume two. I don't know about that yet. But I do think that they've finally given us a reason to want if you need to keep pulling after two pages, if you're not satisfied with where the weapon is, this is better than what we've seen in the past. And I'm always excited for something like that. And now we're going to look at Kate Sith. Um, I, I will start off with just looking at the costume. Uh, his jacket is fine. You know, he's not like the coolest looking character. But I do think uh, the cat here is actually really awesome. Uh, I love the, this costume. I think it looks really good. Unfortunately, you don't really see it that much when you're playing the game because you're mostly going to be looking at the big jacket. But for what it's worth, I, I think that they hit a home run uh, with Kate Sith's costume. It's called Pumpkin Jacket, and it's got the same R ability on Eerie Mask, but then it's got Buff Debuff Extension Plus. And this is an amazing R ability, especially on Kate Sith. It is something I would hi highly recommend picking up if you're wanting to run Kate Sith. However, the downside is they've already given him this R ability before. And to kind of show you, if I pull up uh, my Kate Sith from one of my parties, you can see Party Jacket is the other previous outfit that he had that has buff debuff extension. Now, it's not plus, so there is that, but I mean, it still feels very overlappy to me. Uh, this one had the Critical Potency Arcanum, which is the only person in the game to get that. And I, for that reason, for me, I don't, I don't think that that costume does enough to warrant me pulling on it just to get that costume for Kate. If you're new, like I said, or if you just didn't get the first one, I think that this is worth picking up. It is really good. Most of his stuff is buff and debuff. I mean, almost the entire reason minus the crit build that you use Kate is for that very thing. Uh, looking at Witch's Broom, we're gonna continue that trend. 
And you can see here, it does magic defense decrease and a thunder breach. Very, very efficient item and very good for what it does. However, the reasons that I'm gonna say that I'm not super sold on this is really more along the lines of where my account is, what I'm trying to accomplish, what kind of team compositions I like to use. And I'll talk about it from that angle and compare him more to, for the sake of a comparison to Red 13. But uh, I will also try to give kind of some advice on what I think as far as a new player. But first, I wanna look at the OB1 card. So here, when we pull this up, uh, you can see what we're normally concerned with is that C ability. 40% uh, more physical, not elemental damage. Nobody cares about that. And nobody's gonna be using this weapon because of the amount of damage it does in the C ability. The only thing we're really concerned about with how are the debuffs working. And this one starts at mid potency magic defense down and it never gets past that. It doesn't stack higher, it doesn't do anything like that. So you're getting a lot of value out of this weapon at five star. I can, I can tell you that for sure. That you do get some more duration, two seconds from, from five star to Obi-Wan, not, not a big deal. I also think that for three ATB, this C ability is very, very powerful. Uh, the Thunder Breach, it's again, mid potency right out of the gate, which is really good. So I'm, I'm not really concerned with obi wanting this. However, what I am looking at more is when you get to OB6 again, it doesn't stack here. It does go up to high potency on the Thunder Breach. And at OB10, it's kind of more of the same, just with better, um, you know, better durations. So it does have a sigil boost, which is always good. Uh, the R abilities are quite good. Uh, boost lightning potency at 39 is very, very standard. Boost attack though at 62 is gonna make it uh, tied amongst the highest boost attack R ability weapons in the game. And so for that reason, this will make a great sub weapon uh, for either a, you know physical or magical builds on lightning damage. But what I don't like is, I guess at this point, I'm looking at my account and saying, what do I have? What do I need? And what this does to me for a veteran player or a whale uh, would be, it adds efficiency. And so we've already got people that can do Thunder Breach, but being able to do that plus magic defense down, that, that does make this efficient and it does make it stronger. However, how much stronger is it? Do I really wanna try to build this weapon to OB6 when I already have other characters that can do it. And what I wanna compare it to specifically is Red 13. And if we look at Seaside Collar here, you can see it's also got a Thunder Breach. It starts at mid potency, just the same. At OB6, it goes to high, just the same. Um, it's got a Sigil Boost, just the same. So the only difference is it's got a different R ability, which is HP instead of attack. And I don't think for comparison, that's gonna make a huge difference, but Red 13 has something that Kate does not, and that is access to an AOE heal. So if you look at his other breach weapons, for example, this one, which does wind and water, uh, not only does it have good R abilities, but it's got a cure all down here. That's something that Kate doesn't have on any weapon as of yet. It is my biggest criticism so far of Kate Sith's entire kit. If he had access to AOE heal, I would be so in love with that idea. Uh, here we've got Ivy Collar. Now this one has two different attack boosts, um, but again, we see a double breach. And so I'm looking at what do I wanna do with these characters? And Red 13 is a debuff master and he can do some buffs as well. I mean, very, very good kit for utility. Kate Sith, same thing. The difference is Kate Sith is also geared more towards doing damage and red is is more just all around utility in my opinion and so i think having access to that aoe heal for many accounts especially newer ones is just largely more beneficial than what kate has i think kate's is going to be more geared for higher end players that are trying to really maximize so that they can get better scores in you know ranking type events etc whereas if you're just trying to be able, if your goal is just to clear content, not you don't necessarily have to be top 10 or top 30, then I think that uh, red is just a better option. So for those reasons, 
I'm not as sold on this because I think I already have stuff that can largely do the same thing, and it's not worth double investing in weapons. That not to me. The next thing I want to show though is just a comparison of lightning weapons in the game so that we can really evaluate how worthwhile these two weapons are. Uh, specifically, Vincent's is what I actually want to look at. If you see at the very bottom, you've got the crow familiar there, magic lightning damage, and we're only comparing this to other magical base lightning weapons because I think that's fair. Um, you can see here, OB0, he's got 520% with the multiplier 624. I mean, that knocks everything out of the water except Kieran Gloves, again, because they don't have that multiplier. Going up to OB10, you're looking at, again, like I said, the highest single target magic lightning damage weapon in the game. I don't know exactly if, for example, if you had him in a vacuum and nobody to buff his magic attack, how much does Tifa get with her extra, you know, let's say mid potency magic attack up? I would say enough to make that 940 a little bit higher, but definitely not on the same level as an 1128. Uh, that's just my opinion. From our abilities, again, it I think it is just perfectly situated with what it's doing otherwise. And so, you know, I think that you're really wanting to be using either Tifa or Vincent if you need magic lightning damage. Um, there are some other ones like Crystal Gloves or Electro Cannon that do other good things. There are some, you know, weapons like Crystal Gloves that do AOE, which can in the right situation be somewhat useful. However, most of the time we really want that single target damage. And so I think when you look at this chart, you can easily tell that Vincent is in a really good position here. As for, again, what I said earlier about costumes, you're pretty much limited to either doing the Arcanum or boosting magic ability potency or magic ability mastery. And so you do have some people like Sephiroth that have some access to some of those costumes or Aerith, but again, they don't have the single target lightning damage that you really want. And so I think that Tifa's costume is the only one that's really comparable to Vincent's. And again, this is why I think that this costume is really highly uh, considerable uh, because it probably gives a lot of people access to something they don't have. At the end of the day, I, I do think both of these are really good. It's just the problem that, depending how long you've been playing, okay, and what banners you pulled on versus skipped, this can either be really helpful to people. If you, I mean, a lot of people don't run Kate, but if you were or wanted to, I think his, his weapon is good, really good. His costume is really good. Vincent, same. But if you already have the other things, yeah, sure, you could run Tifa and Vincent, um, which could be really strong with a lightning magic setup. Uh, run that with a Breacher and Red with heal as well, because you probably want some sort of heal, which Kate's going to have a little bit of trouble providing. Um, but you could have that. I don't find that likely to be necessary, at least not for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to save. I'm going to save and hopefully pull on a different banner before the Halloween you know, stuff ends. That's where I'm at. I'd love to know where you are. Are you going to be pulling? Are you not? Do you agree? Disagree? All the usual stuff. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.